I was accepted into every school that I applied to, including Florida State University and University of Florida with full scholarship offers. So if you're interested in finding out how I did this, stay tuned. I remember just how stressful the college application process was. I was in it a couple months ago and it stinks. It's so competitive and we all know comparison is the thief of joy. So we don't need this in our lives, but unfortunately, if you want to go to college, it's kind of a necessary evil, but I'm here to help you and give you as many tips as I can as someone who's gone through it and had a successful run at it. So yeah. So for a little bit of background, I got into the University of South Florida, University of Central Florida, Florida State University, and University of Florida. Those are all really amazing schools and I'm so thankful to have gotten accepted into them. So before I start the video, I just want to remind you of something that I feel like we all forget throughout the college application process from time to time is that no number can determine your intelligence. God made you special and he loves you very much. So I'm going to start off with some more general tips and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty of the essay, resume, stuff like that. Now this is not a tip, but I would like to bring this to your information before I give you advice on how to get into a four-year university is that I highly recommend community college. So I was dual enrolled and I'll be graduating high school with my associate's degree if it all goes to plan. So I basically am having the transfer student experience even though I had to apply as a freshman. So I know what it's like to basically be a transfer student and go to community college. I had an amazing time. I had I got a great education at the community college and I would recommend it to you. Honestly, it's such a great decision. It's cheaper because not only is tuition like half the cost, but you're also living at home. And I could go on and on about the benefits. I did make a blog post about the benefits of dual enrollment and why you should dual enroll. And there's a little bit of information in there just about community college in general. There's definitely a stigma against community college, but I'm just gonna say how it is. That stigma is elitist and scummy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with community college. In fact, it's great because you're making a great financial decision and overall just a great planning decision for your future. Editing Trinity here. Um, I forgot to make a really important point about one of the pros of community college and that is it's typically a lot easier to get into some of your dream schools as a transfer student than a freshman applicant. I know UF and a lot of schools in Florida won't require you to submit an ACT or SAT score if you're a transfer student and just a lot of other stuff like that. It's a lot less competitive. So if you're sold on one school and your stats aren't quite there or you don't get in, this is also a really good option for you. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I think you should really consider community college no matter who you are. But that being said, of course, I'm still gonna help you out in this video. So now I have my second tip, which is more of a proper tip, I guess. Um, is to think hard about the schools that you're actually applying to. Now, it's not like the end of the world because you get to make your choice at the end of it all, but you know, you wanna be applying to schools for the right reasons. Now, prestige and rankings are cool and all, but do they even have your major, you know? How strong is their program for you? Cost is a big thing. In state public schools will cost you less. What scholarships are available? Proximity to home is a big thing. Don't stress out about your school list, but definitely think about them. You definitely want to apply to some safety schools, some that you kind of know for a fact you'll get into. So my biggest recommendation to you with this is to make sure you have safeties, make sure you have some affordable schools, and make sure that you have some that are closer to home. Just give yourself some options. I'm not saying don't apply to those private schools or those super prestigious schools or those ones that are far from home, but give yourself options on the other end of things because you don't know where your mind's gonna be at when it's time to decide. My next tip for you is to research and really learn a lot about every college that you apply to. This can be harder, it's easier for some people depending on the amount of schools you apply to. I only applied to four, so I was able to kind of really get to know each school that I applied to and get a true vibe. You don't have to visit every college you apply to, but um, even just looking at the website and doing a lot of research, YouTube videos and vlogs at each college, those are amazing for getting just a vibe for what the students are like and what student life there is like. I remember I would like almost panic about University of Florida and would really kind of helped me out would be to look at the University of South Florida and University of Central Florida. Both of those schools, their programs, vlogs of students there, and it really got me excited to attend either one. And 
it made me feel a lot better because regardless of whether you get into your dream school or not i feel like it's good and healthy to be excited about every college that you're applying to now next tip which is kind of a branch off that one but it's kind of in a different way research every college that you're applying to and their specific application process each college will ask for different things from you you want to know that you have everything prepared for each college that you're um applying to because the worst thing is being stressed out because you missed something and it's almost the deadline and stuff like that i believe that's all i have for you in general so now we're going to start to talk about the more specific aspects of the application so let's talk about gpa now you can only have so much control over your grades especially because they start from freshman year but there's a couple things i want to let you know the first thing i really want to bring to your attention is that a lot of colleges will recalculate your gpa and i know this is very common in florida if you're applying to a college in florida chances are they're recalculating your gpa i can't say the same for every college so check your school's website to see if they do this but i want to bring this to your attention because i don't see enough people talking about it so basically a recalculated gpa will cut out the electives and they'll only keep your core classes and your foreign language requirements and that's Huge. all those easy electives you take may or may not help you on your application depending on the school you're applying to so keep that in mind for example my unweighted GPA just as it is is a 4.53 but my recalculated GPA is a 4.49 which is not a big difference and I'm not freaking out over that 0.04 percent but it's something to note that your the GPA that colleges are using for admissions may or may not be as good as for raising your gpa i mean i feel like we all kind of know take those higher level courses ap i recommend dual enrollment because you can take more again blog posts dual enrollment's better than ap i definitely believe that a b in a higher level course would be better for you than an a in an easy class one they are weighted the same if it's an ap or dual enrollment or ib because that's on a 5.0 scale but at the same time, you want to show that you're challenging yourself. Colleges want to see that you're willing to challenge for yourself and kind of push yourself further. I don't think they judge you for the B. I mean, you tried. They want to see that you tried. But don't stress about your GPA too much because you only have so much control over that. And there's so many other things on your application that can make all the difference. Test scores! Everybody's favorite! Woo! So first things first, you're gonna wanna take these exams multiple times. So make sure if you qualify for a fee waiver to get a fee waiver. I know the SAT fee waiver covers it for two times taking the exam. So I studied using purely Khan Academy and YouTube my first time taking the SAT exam. And I ended up getting a 1320, which is a pretty good score if I do say myself. So I just wanted to let you know that studying in general just matters the most. And I feel like you can get a really good score no matter who you are, no matter what you have access to. They have a template for their questions because they have to create so many test questions. So all the questions are going to be similar to each other. So if you take the test multiple times or take multiple practice tests, you're going to see that all these questions are the same, but they just have different numbers or they have a different text that they're talking about, etc. So what you need to do is learn this formula, build a routine on how to answer each question type and really understand the test. I feel like it's less about studying the material itself and more about studying the test. And don't get me wrong, I've done, I did online school before everybody did online school since like freshman year. Geometry was a complete blur to me. Algebra 2 was a complete blur because I did it online. I was really nervous, but it really is true that you want to study the test itself instead of the material. I feel like if you work focus on studying the material, you'll get overwhelmed versus learning how to answer one specific question. Because if you learn how to answer one specific question, then you'll know how to answer many, many others. I promise you. But later on, I did end up investing in study books. And I'm not going to lie, they do help a lot. I ended up getting a 1400. And that's a 700 math, 700 reading. Study books helped a lot. Because what I was saying earlier about the templates and the formulas for each question is the study books are basically specifically for the test that you're taking. So these experts basically wrote an entire book identifying strategies for you to answer each question type. And it helped me a lot and it showed in my score. So if you care, if your test score matters to you and you have money to spend, I highly recommend getting study books. So now we're going to talk about your resume, which on Common App and Coalition could also be called your 
activities list, same thing. Basically your extracurricular activities, what you did outside of school. Now on my application, this was the most stressful thing because my numbers were pretty good. My stats are pretty decent. They're at least within the middle 50% range for each school that I applied to, but my extracurriculars were very much lacking. One thing on my resume is from the first semester of freshman year, literally as close to middle school as you can get, and another thing's literally a two and a half week camp I did in the summer. Here's my resume, I'm gonna pop it on the screen. I'm not gonna go over every single thing that I did, but I am gonna point out some important things to note on my resume. So as you can see from my resume, it's pretty inconsistent. I don't do a lot of activities long term. Because I moved halfway through high school, I had a lot of stuff happening. And then um, I started traveling in 2020, so I didn't really have time nor was I in one singular place to do a lot of these extracurricular activities. So while my resume was very inconsistent in that regard, I think it was very consistent in another regard and I think this is a huge strength to my application, was that it's very consistent with my major. I did mark off my major when I was applying to each school because I I know what I want to do. It's essentially video production. It goes by a different name at each school but I did that program for each one I applied to. And I think you can really see, it's very reflected in my resume, that that is my interest. Through some of the website stuff I did, the video stuff I did, the short film stuff, and even the theater stuff to an extent, really shows my love for creativity and digital media. I feel like you can get a really good taste for my personality, that I'm a very specific type of person from my resume. So as for the activities on it, I really had to think outside of the box because I was homeschooled so I couldn't just go to clubs and at one point for a good while throughout my entire junior year I was traveling but that's kind of what led me to start kind of developing my blog and even doing YouTube. Another thing I did was that's kind of outside the box is my dad's a small business owner and he asked me to redo his website and I did and that was a great thing to put on my resume as well. Now of course naturally YouTube and a blog will align with my major and my interests but you know if you're one if you want to be a marine biologist maybe you can make a YouTube channel where you quiz people on ocean facts. Maybe you're wanting to go into business and your aunt owns a store and you can kind of help her out or kind of just shadow her on the business side of things. There's so many different experiences you can have. I think career prep things are just really good in general. Things that align with your interests and your ideal future are going to really boost your application because they're going to see that you're driven and that you're passionate about what you like to do. So first things first when it comes to essays is if an essay is optional, you're doing it. You are doing it. I'm telling you, I'm assigning it to you, you are doing it. Unless you're a psychotic beast, of course. If they don't want it, then don't submit it. Like, they don't need it. But if they, if it's encouraged or if it's optional, you're doing it. So first we're gonna talk about the main like Common App essay, which usually I believe has like around 650 word maximum. So as you know from this video, my resume was lacking completely. A lot of time was left unaccounted for there. So I really knew that my essay was going to be the main thing that would really <laughs> push me when it comes to admissions. I knew my essay was my chance to really show these colleges who I was and kind of save the rest of my application. So my first tip is to take your time. Don't procrastinate and don't submit it on the deadline because I feel like that gives me a lot of anxiety and something could go wrong. But you know, um, for example, UF and FSU's application deadlines were November 1st. Don't feel too pressured and don't freak out if you don't submit your application before October. If anything, submit it kind of in October so that you know um, that you took as much time as you could on this. Now there is a difference between procrastinating and taking your time. I'm not an advocate for pro procrastination. Okay, I'm a big procrastinator, but I'm not an advocate for it, okay? But I will say, I did not procrastinate on my college application. I did not procrastinate on my essays, but I submitted them fairly later because I wanted to take as much extra time as I could to really carve things out and really perfect every detail. Because if there's a regular application deadline, there's not it's not gonna make a difference how early you fill it out. If you get it in by November 1st, you're the same as everyone else. So my next tip for you is when you're kind of first planning your essay, 
I want you to look at your application thus far. Think about your GPA, think of your test scores, think of your resume, and think of the gaps that are kind of being left there. What else do you want these colleges to know about you that isn't already reflected in these aspects of your application? For example, I wanted them to know about a lot of the struggles that I went through. Not for like a sob story, like, oh, except me, I went through a lot. But I do think sharing a few parts of my story helped to kind of explain my extracurricular activities, not in an entitled way because I did paint it in a very positive light. It did explain a few things like the extracurricular activities on my application, but it also kind of made my grades look that much better because my GPA is still strong and I managed to be a pretty good student through that. I wanted them to know that I live in a camper and travel because obviously that's a cool thing. And I wanted them to know that because I think an admissions officer would see that and think that's a really cool thing and a cool perspective to add to their campus. Um, but also that also further helps to explain my extracurriculars too, because obviously if I'm going to a new city every week, I can't be joining local activities. This is your time to really tell them more about you and you can be very creative with it. Um, think about what makes you unique. And I know not everyone lives in camper and travels. Like that's pretty unique and for me and not normal, but there's something that makes you unique. I know for a fact, ask your family, ask your friends, what's different about me? What's different about my life? What's something unique that I can add um, to a campus? Let's say you are incredibly short. You are four foot 11. Write about your life experiences being four foot 11. Maybe you move from another country. Maybe you move from a very rural area to a very urban area. And that was a cool experience for you and very interesting. I feel like we've all have a unique life experience that teaches us our own things. So just evaluate your story. You may think you have a normal and boring life, but I promise you there's something unique and something really cool about you. And even if that's just your creative voice, even if you just have a really cool and funny personality, if you show that through in your writing, that's a unique aspect that can go into your essay. And I think you can make it very strong. As I said earlier, God made you special and he loves you very much. So you wanna think about what makes you special and what makes you cool. I'm not gonna lie, I definitely wrote off the fact and really sold the fact that like, I live in a camper, I live in a camper, I travel, I travel, you know, because I'm different, yay. So just be very strategic with it. So supplemental essays, are kind of shorter essays that colleges will oftentimes ask for. The University of Florida had one supplemental essay that had a 250 word maximum that they wanted that you were required to fill out. And the University of Central Florida had three optional supplemental essays. I did all of those as well. The UF one in particular, I spent quite a long time on, probably as long as my common app, to be honest, I spent a good month on that. The UCF ones, I kind of wrote within a couple days though. So what's cool about the supplemental essays is you can really, really tailor them that to the school, the specific school, because it's not going to every college that you're applying to, it's going to that one specific college. So here I want you to do the exact same thing you did for the last part and really think about everything they know about you as of this moment, including your Common App essay and what else I can tell them. And more specifically, what does University of Florida want to know about me? Or what does UCF want to know about me, etc. I think researching the school very well can also help you out here. Learning about special programs that they have to even incorporate that into the essay because that'll show your interest in the school because obviously if they're going to accept you, they're going to want you to take their offer. Now the next tip I have for you when it comes to supplementals is a massive tip. It was really helpful for me. A counselor told me this. The tip is to Google the college's mission statement and kind of incorporate that into your supplementals. So this is what I did. I'll show the UCF ones for as an example is um, when I was writing and drafting, I had a Word document and at the top I had UCF's mission statement and I kind of highlighted key words in it that I knew I wanted to incorporate into my essays. Because every college is different and each student body is different. So kind of fitting yourself into that idea of their ideal student body will really help you out. Reusing supplemental essays is no problem. I reused my UF essay for my for UCF because they asked similar questions. So when we're thinking about my entire application as a whole, my stats are pretty good, but if we're thinking about the University of Florida in particular, my stats were average, my resume was bleh. <laughs> So I really think it's very important to put a lot of effort into your essays. I think my biggest advice for you would be to put a lot of effort into your essays. Really show your unique voice, how special you are, and also be natural and don't be afraid to admit your flaws because I feel like that'll come off very 
unique as well. Although my stats are good, I really do think it was the essay that did it for me. I really do hope this video helped you. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I wish you and your college applications the absolute best, but also I want you to remember that what school you go to doesn't matter. Think about when you're 30, you're gonna be happy no matter what. It worked out for me and I'm very happy about that and I hope it works out for you, but at the end of the day, you're gonna go where you're supposed to go. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked this video, let me know by leaving a like on it. If you like me, then subscribe for more of me and go Gators, or Knolls, or Knights, or Bulls, or Eagles, or whatever college you're applying to. Good luck. <laughs>